Hey, good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday night. We are live. It is R3 and uh, excited to be able to come to you. And tonight I'm solo. I'm all by myself and we're going to we're going to have some fun. And uh, Pastor Rod is at home and we want to give a shout out already to Karen Shock. It's her birthday today. And I know a lot of you already commented and wished her a happy birthday. Uh, but Karen, we say happy birthday. We so appreciate you and all that you do and who you are. Uh, you're just an amazing woman of God. And so uh, tonight, I'm sure they're having a nice meal and doing something. So um, tonight, uh, we want to um, talk about all things that make us healthy. It's body, soul, and spirit. It's R3. It's restore, renew, rebuild. And uh, we've been talking about a lot of variety of different things. And tonight I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, I'm going to actually put on the chat and I believe I can actually put on the chat. So you guys will come up live, I believe. So uh, I'm doing that because I really want to get your input on some things. That's great. Yeah. And if you have some comments for Karen, uh, please put them up. Uh, if you've not already on the Facebook page, um, just an amazing woman. So, you know, I don't know what, uh, what they get to do tonight having a birthday in lockdown is not the uh the greatest thing in the world for sure um but we're going to talk tonight i want to um i want to do a few things one of the things i want to start with uh, i want to revisit real quick i don't want to take too long but i want to visit real quick uh vitamin d we talked about that two weeks ago uh interesting it just came up the other day in parliament um i believe it was derek sloan asked the question about vitamin d because more and more people are becoming aware not only of the importance of vitamin d but also how it can also uh help us during this time with covid um and it's interesting so i downloaded an app and i want to show that to you guys um again it's kind of geeky stuff but i want to let you know um i downloaded this thing it's called d minder i'm not sure if you can see it that's the the actual uh the way it looks like uh the app picture it's called d minder and uh it's super interesting so i i started with the free version then i i wanted to geek out a little bit more and i paid the 350 or whatever it is for the uh the full version and uh I, i'm telling you this for this reason so you can tell i'm a little tanned i've been sitting out in the sun trying to get my vitamin d a lot of you saw the picture of after our snowfall and uh, i put i take my vitamin d very seriously getting my vitamin d um, but here's the thing i want to share with you that is so interesting so i've been tracking my vitamin d for i believe two and a half weeks uh, this app is really cool because it tells you when the best time to be outside is when you can actually get vitamin d and when you can't get vitamin d uh, but it's really cool because it actually tracks how much vitamin d you're getting so i'm telling you all this because uh, so once you put in your age and all the information it'll tell you how much vitamin d you should be getting so with taking supplements vitamin d supplements and getting in the sun i've only had one day so far without taking too much of it i'm trying to get my vitamin d naturally um i've only had one day so far where i've actually made the uh the amount that i need to get on a regular basis one day i think that's incredible because so often i think we're outside we think we're getting enough vitamin d um, only to realize that we're not getting enough vitamin D. And as I shared last week, um, all wintertime in our area because of our, uh, um, from the equator, our distance from the equator, and because of the angle of the sun, that all winter we don't get vitamin D. So the reality is I'm trying to get enough vitamin D in a day, but if I haven't been taking enough vitamin D supplements, I'm already in a deficiency, which means I need to get a little more. And so right now uh, I've been barely getting um, 40 NG or mils a day, um, which is like 5,000 IUs or, or 5,500 IUs. Um, so and that is what they consider like that doesn't even put me in the green zone yet so i don't know about you guys but i'm just super interested to think that all this time i thought i was getting enough vitamin d which they now prove that helps with a whole slew of things including respiratory illness and i'm just beginning to realize i'm not even beginning enough so and i've been diligently sitting out in the sun so um anyway so uh if you guys have comments tonight please uh, get them on on here. Uh, I think that all the comments are coming up. Uh, I believe I'm seeing all of them and you might be seeing all of them. Um, so uh, let me know if you've been trying to get some vitamin D. Let me know if you guys have been uh, 
uh, actively try and do get any supplements. If you start to take another supplement, let me know. Just curious what people are taking. Um, as well, know that I'm not a doctor. I'm just trying to share things that I've been researching. I'm going to do that again tonight. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are, uh, are trying to get some vitamin D. I want to pull up the feed again as well. So again, tonight I am absolutely solo going on this. So I don't have a sidekick, uh, but we're going to have some fun anyway, because you're going to get involved. All right. So, um, diligently use sunscreen too. Yeah. I'm, what I'm trying to find is the absolute balance where I can get some vitamin D without sunscreen and then put sunscreen on because I will burn. I always do. So it's trying to find that balance because when you use sunscreen, they're, they're finding that you don't get enough vitamin D and yet we need sunscreen if we're going to be out for long periods of time. So that being said, I often get out, uh, early in the morning. Okay. What I want to do tonight is a little different. Um, you know, we're, uh, I don't know if we're, what, two or three weeks into our lockdown right now and uh, talking with a lot of people and um, you can feel in the atmosphere, the heaviness, you can feel um, there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of heaviness. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of depression. Um, people are feeling it. I talked to one person today who, you know, she was saying, I'm feeling it. And I talked to all, uh, she was a woman. She said, all my girlfriends are all feeling it as well. It's really in the atmosphere. And I think it, it really gives us an opportunity. In my mind, um, anytime you have a negative, we have to learn to go, what is the opportunity in this? And I think right now, for me, one of the things that I'm realizing is the opportunity is there for us to go back to some simplistic or simple things. You guys know, I talk a lot about, uh, I love to get out of this area. I love to travel. For me, it's a way to disconnect. The reality is, I think it's a good thing. But in this season, if I focus too much on that, I'm always hoping for something that I can't do. And that is, that's really depressing. Um, you know, I thought for sure by now a year ago that I'd be able to vacation again, uh, somewhere significant. We're not there. So if I live in that place, I'm going to take a nosedive. And a lot of people I think right now are going, you know, is there an end to this? And, and I'm not going to get into the, the politics. That's not what we're talking about right now. What I want to talk about though, is, um, things that give us life. You know, um, what I'm going to actually talk about is what's called a life giving list. So this is something new that I've begun to do. Um, so, so far over the R3 and over sermons and different things, we've talked about uh, the need to be grateful. Gratefulness, the Bible clearly states that gratefulness, being grateful, thinking upon those things which are virtuous and pure and holy, you know, being grateful, um, coming to God with gratefulness, it's such a key for mental health, emotional health, you know, body, soul, spirit. It really honestly begins to take uh, care of all three of them. So gratefulness. So in the morning when I wake up, one of the first things I try to do in my in my quiet time or my Bible time or my soaking time or whatever you want to call it, I really try to make sure that we ha I have uh, a time where I write at least three things that I'm grateful for. Um, and I try to, you know, it's easy to say the same things over and over again. I really try to look for things that I have not um, touched on. And so I'm like, Lord, you know, show me more things. And I'm amazed some of the things I'm like, man, I never even thought about that. I'm so grateful for this. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for a house, you know, roof over my head. I'm so grateful that, you know, uh, just a few short days ago, I was able to, you know, it was my birthday. I was able to celebrate with my family. It was not the same. My extended family was not there, but I was so thankful that my kids were there. I was so thankful that I was able to have steak. And, and uh, actually that was the next day because, you know, some things happen and somebody blessed me and I'm like, man, there, there's so many things to be grateful for. So that is one of the things I, I'm looking at in the morning. A second thing I mentioned, um, what I try to do at night is I try to look where was the goodness of God during the day. And I really try to take time again. I don't do this every night, but I try to take time and say, Lord, where was your hand? And I wasn't even seeing it where, you know, um, where did you move? And I, and I, I was unaware of, um, I'll give you an example. One day, um, this is a shout out to Ben Bello. Um, many of you know that my son and I are doing a, well, it's my son. I work for my son now, Caleb. Uh, he's launched a business and he's doing uh, lawn care. And so does Ben Bello. Ben Bello is doing a great job with a lawn care business. And he was over one day and uh, I was just sharing. We had a big job to do the next day. And he's like, man, I'd love to come. So I'm like, 
okay. You know, I thought, I don't know how we can do this and how it's going to work out. The next day when we went to that job, it was way more work than I expected. Uh, and, and both Caleb and I, and I thought, you know, thank goodness Ben was here. Like that was the hand of God that Ben came over the night before, offered to help, and he came. And he he was, man, he worked his tush off. And it was so awesome to spend time together. But I thought that was the hand of God. That was the goodness of God setting up for success the next day without me even realizing it. And so I was able to journal that and go look at, you know, the goodness of God in that moment. So um, God is moving throughout our day and we have to actually take time to figure out, Lord, where are you moving and make me aware of where you're moving. And sometimes, you know, sometimes we know that hindsight is twenty twenty. Sometimes after the fact is when we actually see the hand of God and how he was moving. So it's so good to journal that. But tonight I want to talk about a third thing. I want to talk about a life giving list. As I mentioned, right now, people are discouraged, depressed, a lot of things. People can't do the things that they would normally do. Like I said, vacationing or, you know, going to the show, going out to eat, you know, all the things that we normally rely on. A lot of them we cannot do right now. And so I want to challenge you tonight to do something that hopefully will begin to a open your eyes to see ways that you get life that you get refilled and b uh, maybe some simplistic things that you've not thought of that you can put into your day um, one of the things that i'm aware of in north america we like this is probably worldwide but we are um, notorious for never taking breaks and setting boundaries and just running full tilt you know we we go to work and then we come home and we have all these jobs to do all these things we want to do around the house and i've really in the last probably three years begun to ask the lord to show me how to rest and of course rest does not mean that we don't do things but it also means that we should try to take some time not to do things i'm trying to really implement a sabbath into my life where i really take a whole day um, you know, it, it's different for me because a lot of I try to do Sundays if possible, um, but half the day is obviously taken up with ministry. But when I get home on Sundays, I try to put the phone away and I really try to spend time uh, taking an actual Sabbath, meaning I'm, I'm resting, I'm, I'm doing family, I'm doing things that I enjoy. So back to what my point is tonight. What I want to talk about is creating a life giving list that you can turn to remind yourself of how do you receive life how do you recharge how do you nourish you know it's interesting that word i was sharing on sunday if you heard me preach i talked about believe and you know you're in believing you know may the god of hope fill you with all joy in believing and that word believing and the other word in psalms and you know, i would have lost heart if i had not seen uh the goodness of the lord if i if i did not believe that i would see the goodness of the lord in the land in the living land of the living <clears throat> and that word goodness actually has the word nourish attached to it or sorry the word believing has the word nourish attached to it and so a lot of times in life we're unaware of the things that bring us nourishment what are the things that recharge our batteries what are the things that make us come alive we could be and, and you know we're notorious in ministry and all of us you know i'm a minister but all of us want to minister to other people and we can often forget that we need to recharge our batteries ourselves we need to get nourished ourselves a great example of why this is so important um you know you go on an airplane and one of the things that they'll say when they give the spiel is you know if in case of an emergency the uh the um oxygen mask will fall please put the oxygen mask on yourself before you help somebody else and i think that's a great analogy because a lot of times we want to help others and we want to be so active and, and that is so important but sometimes we're actually nose diving ourselves, and we don't even realize it. and i've gone through one major moment in my life and i've gone through several smaller moments in my life where i i don't set boundaries or i don't set things in place where i get recharged and the reality is it's spiritual it's physical it's emotional it's mental and if you run 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 and you don't ever recharge at some point you will crash or you will take a nosedive hopefully not crash and so uh it, it's spiritually if we don't read the word of god daily you know you can't live off a sunday sermon or one time a week and eventually it will catch up with you and you will feel spiritually dry or fear spiritually empty 
physically, if we don't exercise our bodies on a regular basis, we will eventually physically feel that effect. Um, emotionally, if we don't take time to charge emotionally, we'll feel that effect. So what is a life-giving list? A life-giving list <clears throat> is simply taking the time, and I want to actually get some input today. It's taking the time to sit down and say, Lord, what are ways that charge me? And I want you to concentrate, really, there's three areas. How do I recharge with people? Or do I recharge with people? How do I recharge with places? And how do I recharge with things? So let me give you an example for people. Um, for people, I am a, um, I'm kind of an introvert, extrovert. I, I'm somewhere in the middle. I, I have to find always the balance. But I love being with people. Um, I actually love hosting people. One of the greatest joys I have is hosting get-togethers, if I can host Christmas or Easter. And so over the last year, that has been very difficult on my heart not to be able to host gatherings. I actually, <clears throat> one of the ways I get charged is actually putting on fancy meals for my family. I love setting the, the table really fancy. I, I grew up that way over holidays. You know, we would have the three-course, four-course felt like 10 course meals and we would we would make it really special. <clears throat> so I try to do that right now although I can't host, I try to do with our family occasionally. Just last week we got out the tablecloth and the fine dishes and you know the fine china all that and we had a really nice fancy meal. That recharges me. I put on my classical music. My kids know it. Actually the other day I came home one day and the, um, one of my daughters already had classical music playing for our meal because she had made the meal and she was really excited about it. <clears throat> I love candles at our meal. So these are, are both people and things. I love the ambiance of it. I love, um, you know, I, I love to, to have the conversations. When I grew up, going back, um, you know, I don't know if it's like for you guys, but our meals at Christmas time would be long. Like we would have salad and then you know we never put everything on our plate at once we would have salad and then we would take a break and then we would have possibly another hors d'oeuvre and take a break and then we'd have our main course and then we'd take a break and then we'd have our dessert and we'd take a break and maybe more dessert but that would take sometimes two hours and we'd have all this conversation <clears throat> and in this season i realized that is one of the ways that i recharge i love to be with people i love to have conversation i love to talk uh you know, with people, another thing would be campfires. You know, how many on here? Let me know if you love uh, campfires. Is that a way that you recharge? And do you love, I get a whole bunch of notifications, so I can't read anything. Um, do you do you recharge when you have people at a campfire and you're just sitting around talking? You know, um, you know, one of the ways I love is uh, when I go camping and I, I actually, if I go to bed early and people are out at the fire still, I love hearing the crackling fire and I love hearing the conversation. And if I'm lucky enough, I love hearing the waves crashing in the distance. If I'm close to the water, I love that. I love that. Um, so that would be people, you know, how do you recharge with people places? I already mentioned camping. I, I love nature for me. Getting out for a walk is one of the number one ways I recharge. Um, getting by water is another major way I recharge. I love to listen. I actually, I go to sleep most nights listening to ocean waves. Um, you know, that's huge for me. I love the sound of water. I love the sound of birds. My my family have, uh, you know, they, it's funny. We uh, The first time we ever went to Mexico, the greatest moment was hearing birds chirp. We were in the middle of winter when we left. Windsor and we got to Mexico and we got there at night and when we got up in the morning we heard all these birds chirping it was incredible we still talk about it and it's funny because we'll be sitting outside and the kids will go dad that's a Mexican bird it's not <laughs> but that's the sound that some of the birds made and so we call them Mexican birds so we all love uh the sounds of birds um so for me nature like I said nature's huge um Hillary, you're saying uh, you love the Ocean Wave soundtrack. That's awesome. Um, my mom, uh, Pastor Gary, said she recharges at the beach, just listening to the waves. A good book. So that's one of the another things that I'm learning to do. So the simplicity of right now is that, you know, again, we used to run around and go to all these things. You know, we'd go to the show. So right now, because I, I was able to build a pergola last year and I covered it. So with the warmer weather, man, I'm loving sitting outside, grabbing a book hearing the birds chirp, 
um, you know, and just reading, just spending time reading. <clears throat> what is important, though, is beginning to understand that this is a healthy way to recharge. Um, we don't always have to have the big. We have to find what are the small ways to recharge? What are the simple ways? If we're always right now looking at what we don't have, we will we will be depressed. We'll, we'll be disappointed. You know, if we can't do this and can't do that, and a lot of people are living there, and I've I've honestly had to try to find a balance. You know, I, I get on a webcam every once in a while. I look at um, I look at Cabo. We went to Cabo and loved it, and I see webcams. But if I look at that too long, I begin to go, man, I want to be there, and then I get off track and I and I I get depressed. So I have to get back to going. What are the simple things that I can recharge with? And honestly, anybody that's a baby boomer on here or older, you know, these are things that you've known all your life. You know, you grew up knowing family was a way to recharge and just spending time. I think somebody put on here spending time with the grandkids and backyard bar bonfires. Absolutely. These are all things that <clears throat> it was normal for that generation and it became less normal because we always wanted to do bigger and better or get to the cinema and a bigger show and more shows. And, and we have to get back to the simplicity in this hour and hopefully not lose the simplicity. So we've got people and I love you guys to start throwing more ideas because one of the things that happens is that when you see somebody else's idea, sometimes you're like, you know what? That's how I recharge too. I never realized that's how I recharge. So, um, Ellen Peck, you put, I love nature and walks. Absolutely. Um, Name some other ways. So we've got people, we've got places. So we've talked about the beach. We've talked about vacations, of course. We've talked about going for a walk in nature. Here's a little tidbit for you, really interesting. I was doing a, some research and um, talk about the power of nature. So even if you get on a treadmill, but you watch a video of nature while you're on a treadmill, they've proven through scientific, all the, you know, putting the uh, electrodes on that your stress level and anxiety drops. Now, if you watch something on, on while you're running, if it's just a TV show, it drops a little bit, but the connection with nature and stress and anxiety, it dropped significantly more than anything else that was uh, watching people were watching. And so I thought that was, that's fascinating. So you know, we have a lot uh, working in the garden, you know, going for bike rides. That's another one. You're in nature. You're seeing a different scenery. We can bike ride right now. Uh, Uno light, Uno nights. I love the game Uno. Uh, we just recently bought the game Uno flip. We got, I think, for Christmas or before that. And uh, that's a, another version of Uno. It's really fun. Uh, laughter, though, is huge. We need to laugh more. Uh, Karen Bella, board games or cards. Um, how many... Uh, Euchre fans do we have out there? People that love to get together and play Euchre. Uh, that's one of the things that we love to do uh, with some group of friends and just laugh, just get one of the things, honestly, that we can be notorious for as adults and sometimes as Christians is we forget how to laugh. We forget how to have fun. We literally forget to play. I've done a lot of research on that as well. Did you know that kids do not have to figure out how to play? They naturally just know how to play and laugh and have fun. And somewhere as we grow older as adults, we actually forget how to play, literally forget how to get with, on our hands, our knees with our kids and just wrestle with them. You know, um, there are companies now that are having they have rooms like if you if you study Disney, Apple, um, some of the other big ones, I'm trying to remember, they actually have places where you can go and play during the day to recharge because they need their writers, their script writers, the people that are creating things to be full on and they need to be fresh. And so they have game rooms, literally game rooms, and they have rooms where they can just go and be silly and, and ping pong and foosball. And I thought, man, we need to learn to do more of that. Um, having fun and laughing is a healthy, emotional, spiritual thing. Uh, so important. All right, what do we else we got here? Uh, crib. Uh, you can have all the 19 hands. I actually don't know how to play crib. That's one game I don't know how to play. So uh, I have to learn how to play that. Uh, Carabelle, you put board games or cards. Um, Ellen Peck says, I love to sit underneath our backyard tree with hubby and just talk about our day. So important. Uh, they have found, as I said earlier, so many people come home from their day and rush into the next. 
Um, I can honestly say one of the things that I loved when I watched my parents growing up is they always took time after dinner and they always had a glass of tea and they would spend time talking. I just went over there the other day to drop something off and sure enough on the back porch, there they were having their, their tea and talking. Um, so, so, so important. Um, so make sure you, you get some time to do that. Uh, Connie Robinson, I host board games, uh, once a month with my family, we spend hours playing different games. It's fantastic. That is so awesome. Uh, so good to be able to do that with our kids. Uh, we play Rummy Cube with our kids. I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with that. Um, love to do that. Uh, Ferdinand, watching and taking care of my Purple Martin over 70 birds. Yeah, I know that. That's actually, I think, believe I believe how you got saved, Martin. Uh, uh, Ferdinand, sorry. Uh, with your Purple Martins. Um, with Jill, I believe it was. And so that's a great hobby. Um, so here's another thing. Um, how many of us have hobbies? You know, that should be part of our life giving list. Um, how many people find life in doing something like artwork? I'd love to hear if you do that. If you play an instrument, how many find life when you just sit down and play that instrument? Um, you know, somebody, I think my mom put gardening, like what other ways do you find um, that you can do that bring you life. And I think those uh, hobbies and arts are so important. Um, <clears throat> I read about a gentleman recently that I think he was 40 and took up the flute. And he said it was horrible at first, <clears throat> but he, he needed something that when he got home, he could get his mind diverted from the whole day's work. So he, he took up playing the flute. It was like a, a different type of flute, uh, more like a lute probably. Um, but he said after a couple of weeks, he actually could put out some tunes and it's, he loves it now. So a uh, super important, um, painting and listening to the word. Um, you yeah, know, those are two things you can do at the same time, which is awesome. Uh, highlight is family dinner with great conversation. Absolutely. And Karen Bello is a incredible host. Um, man, she, she kills it in the kitchen. <clears throat> and so I know you, you thrive in that <clears throat> for some people like myself, we, you know, we have to find that balance, but sometimes for us hosting and, and then seeing the fruit of our labor is actually life giving. It's, it's less work than it is joy. <clears throat> um, so super important. Anybody else? Let's get some more things going here. Um, replying to Chris, uh, this is my wife. Yes, we have the best conversations at the dinner table. It's where we laugh the most. Just before I left, we had a super funny moment. Um, with our son and uh, we just laughed and laughed and my son seems to be cracking us up more these days and that is so <laughs> important to laugh with each other we've I've shared this before at our dinner table we have some of the most intense not angry but intense we've had moments where we're angry but some of the most um, worldview conversations come up and with COVID it's come up and all the different things and it's the chance for them to share their heart and and you know it's so important um and that can be both life giving and draining, but you got to find the balance. So, uh, Karen Bella, hobby, sewing, scrapbooking, cross stitch, diamond art. That's a new one. Diamond art. Okay. Uh, try to want to try to make, uh, cards and kayaking. Go Karen kayaking. That's awesome. Uh, love kayaking. It's so much fun. Uh, paddle boarding. That's another one. I'd like to get more into paddle boarding. Um, it's not something obviously you can do easily. You have to go someplace and rent it. Um, <clears throat> But, uh, you know, so much fun to be able to do that. So for me, that's a thing. I'm, I'm paddle boarding, um, yet I'm on the water. So I'm getting recharged by hearing the water. Uh, man, if you have a chance to be on the water and see the sunset. So that's another bonus. Uh, so, so important. Connie Robinson, yard sailing. Connie, I can't agree with you on that one. That drives me crazy. But I'm glad for you that is a recharge. Yard sailing, we spend entire days bomb, uh, bombing around the county. Uh, searching for yard sales. That is awesome. That's not how I recharge. See, that's different for everyone. Um, <clears throat> I try carving with a chainsaw. Ferdinand, that's incredible. Um, I love it. And I can totally see you doing that. So make sure you're careful. Um, but I could totally see you carving eagles and different things out of that. So, man, I love these. These are so unique. Um, what are other ways that you guys, uh, you know, how many are, are big bubble bath people? That's not something that some people love, but are there any people that, man, that's, that's your thing. You put on music, you do a bubble bath, you just relax and read a book. Um, I know for my wife, reading a book <clears throat> around the pool in the summertime, she just loves to be outside. Uh, she loves to read, so she combines both of them. Um, 
So for me in the summertime, uh, Krista bought me a sprinkler that goes on our pool so I can hear the water because I love the sound of water. And so I love as well to be on our pool deck and uh, just listening to the sounds of water. So these are awesome. Any other things <clears throat> that uh, I want to make sure I, because sometimes they don't always come up. Yeah, I'm not getting all the comments here because we got a few more on this side. Painting and listening to the word. Oh, that was Peter. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, maybe I have seen all these. Uh, me and my hubby share a hobby. We thrift store and hunt uranium glass. Now that is a unique one, Connie. Very <laughs> interesting. I'm not even. We're gonna have to have a conversation. You can explain that one. Uh, I love it. Uh, my mom. Uh, yeah. So, um, how many are pet lovers that love to spend time with your pets to recharge? My mom recently. Uh, they got a dog. That is a mind blowing miracle that my parents have a dog that honestly if you would have told me two years ago they would have a dog i would laugh and uh so now they have a dog bella and she is the cutest thing and going for walks and we just go over sometimes to play with bella and our kids love to do that so uh, another one here linda likes uh, baking for friends and family yeah but how many bakers in here how many people get recharged when you can get into the kitchen for no other purpose than just baking for fun uh, i think it becomes hard when you have to bake for other people um, if it's like an ongoing thing but if you could just get in the kitchen and bake how many recharge i'd love to know how many love doing that i have to keep talking so you guys keep typing see if there's some more in here <clears throat> it's coming up i got all these gadgets all right so what is my point to all this again i would encourage you here's my challenge i would i would love to hear um how many people can actually come up with 50 things that are life-giving to them they can be big they can be small I remember one person sharing about how uh, they're often an early riser way before their wife gets up. And he was sharing about how much he just appreciates in the morning when when he's just about to get out of bed. And he doesn't want to wake his wife, but he says, sometimes I just I put my hand <clears throat> on her leg or her shoulder very gently. And he says, just being able to to, to feel the presence of my wife brings life to me. So you know, these are things that we just become aware and go, you know what? I need to stop for a minute. Uh, another one, how many people are huggers? You know, I'm a hugger. For me, one of the things I love to do is just be able to hug my wife or my kids. A hug for me recharges me. You know, it doesn't have to be long. Of course, with Chris, it's longer, but sometimes just and in this season, hugging someone and feeling their presence and knowing that you're loved back, that's huge absolutely huge and so i would love my challenge for everyone is can you come up with 50 different things that bring you life we've got a lot on here already you can already start to do but i'd love to see and here's my challenge for you as well is write out things that are cheap with people places and things write out things that are kind of a medium budget that you could do kind of any time it's not going to break the bank but you know things that you can do with a medium budget uh people places and things and then write out some bigger things that you've done or want to do that you know will be life-giving that are dreams with people places and things um you know and and get some dreaming happening that you can look forward to but see if you can come up with 50 different things my actual uh my objective my goal i want to come up with a hundred things that i'm personally aware of that bring me life they can be small to big and i want to become more aware so here's the last key i'll talk about we're not gonna be long tonight um one of the things that i'm very aware of is um that we're not present aware and taking in the very things that bring us life so one of the challenges is this very thing see i got you guys on and i got myself on this tool which is a wonderful tool has become one of the greatest distractions in our generation i was just reading an article tonight that is talking about um they're now doing more and more research um they know that now 2012 was a key year because iphones smartphones and tablets became very mainstream they were before that but they just took off like crazy and they are now discovering how much people are depressed 
And now this goes with social media as well. Depressed, disconnected, and lonelier than ever before. It's interesting. Facebook, this is airing on Facebook. Facebook was meant to, uh, to attach people together, to bring people together. And yet the very result of it is often that people are disconnected. They are discouraged. They are jealous more than ever before. Does it make it a bad tool? Not necessarily. I think the onus is on us to know how to set boundaries and discipline ourselves. So one of the things I'm trying to do is when I'm outside is shut this thing off or put it away. I'm not used to that. I'm used to wanting to reply to people. Uh, you know, I, I want to be a good steward and reply, but I'm also finding what happens is it distracts me from the very joy of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to receive life from a moment and that very phone is distracting me from receiving life. It could be, you know, a multitude of things. Sometimes we, we want to multitask and we want to try to do all these things. And in doing that, we're actually not receiving the life that that very thing that we want to do is supposed to be giving us. You know, you can't be outside listening to birds and having your phone go off constantly. I challenge my kids today because I'm becoming aware for them, of them that they love to have music or something on all the time. And I was just sharing with them, you need to have space to think about your thoughts. And for this generation, the younger generation, it is so hard for them to, to actually be silent because they're bombarded. And so that's going to be a learning curve for them as they get older if they want to grow in this. And that's just not my kids. That's kids in general. And so, um, you know, here we are in a pandemic and it's this stuff is creating the loneliest generation ever on earth. And the pandemic is creating loneliness and disconnection. So my point is we have to become more aware of how to connect. And we have to become aware that we may only get five minutes to do it right now. We may only get it from six feet away, but we can still be present and aware and go right now. I'm going to receive the life that I can get from this. I'm going to put everything away, all the distractions. I'm going to sit and, and be present in a conversation, or I'm going to sit in nature and put away the phone. I'm going to be present as I walk. I'm going to listen. You know, how often the saying used to be, you know, how often do we take time to smell the roses, stop and smell the roses? How often are we taking time to sit in nature and listen to the birds chirp without any other distractions? And it doesn't mean that playing music is bad. I'm just... My point is that we have to learn to disconnect from all the other things. And to be honest, you know, to be transparent for me, I love to get away because for me, that is one of the only ways at times I can disconnect from um, from the ministry, the, the weight of ministry. And so uh, I think it's actually a healthy thing that I do that. But right now, again, I have to find ways to do it. Uh, just looking at any other comments, Connie, small things, smelling flowers. Uh, it seems cliche. I just, yeah, but honestly, it gets me in a deep in my soul. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's why essential oils have become huge because we are now realizing how much smell impacts us. It impacts us emotionally and impacts, um, our neuro system. It, it impacts a ton of things. And I'm not promoting, I'm just saying essential oils, but the point is, um, it, it's actually the smells that are, uh, so important. <clears throat> uh, many people have taken up birding. So I assume that is, what is birding? Um, I'm not sure what birding, I'm a, is that bird watching or maybe I'm totally out on that. I'm not sure what birding is. So please give me some more feedback on that. Um, <clears throat> the best hugger is on. Hi, Donna. Yeah, Donna's a great hugger. Absolutely. Uh, man, I miss hugs. Chris Welch, if you're walk, watching, I, you know, Chris and I joke because Chris is not a hugger and I'm a hugger, but I think I've actually turned him to the hug side. So he's missing hugs right now. And I'll tell you, our healthcare workers could use a lot of hugs. Um, you know, they're going to have to get some overtime and hugs when they're done all this. Um, all right. Any other comments here? So my goal for you now, a lot of times we hear this and we go, well, you know, that's great, but um, I would love to hear the first person, I'd love for you to text me or Facebook me and let me know I've got 50. Can you get 50 things that bring life to you? Uh, here we go. Bird watching and identifying each bird. Okay, I thought so. I just wanted to make sure. So, um, yeah, a lot of people, I didn't know a lot of people, but I know people do that. And, uh, you know, actually, I could see myself getting into that. So I don't call the birds Mexican birds anymore. I actually can name them. Um, I believe one of the birds that we hear often is a cardinal that uh, has the sound that we love. So, um, all right. 
So, um, hung around our neighborhood, a falcon. That's very cool. So Connie's up on our birds as well. Connie's up on everything. Connie's amazing. We love you, Connie. All right. Well, I'm going to close it out in a few minutes. I'd love to hear any other ideas before I close it out of life-giving things that uh, I would love to hear somebody's most unique that you can share life-giving thing. Um, We've talked about reading books. We've talked about nature. We've talked about, you know, ocean waves, which is obviously nature, going for a walk and bike rides and smelling flowers, doing artwork, all these things. Um, how many have a place where you love to do, say, you know, how many have a favorite chair outside? I think, Ellen, you said underneath a tree, one of your trees. You know, how many have that place where you, man, if I can get there? For me, I have a place at home. And I have a place, you know, if I could get to the beach and read, if I could, sometimes I actually go and study, uh, if it's very rare, but if I can, I'll go and study at the, the beach. Um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Uh, we've begun to go for drives. Um, my kids, anytime we go for a drive, we had to pick something up in Amherstburg today. They jump at the opportunity to get out of the house right now. And so we went for a drive to Amherstburg and we looked at different homes and talked about how beautiful they were anything like that that brought life to me it got me charged up just getting out of the house so all right guys i so appreciate it. if there's any other things on here i'd love for you to type them real quick and i know i'm 30 seconds delayed so uh get on here real quick if there's any other things that bring you life again anybody have any unique things that bring you life <clears throat> not getting too many other comments so cup of tea coffee how many love to go uh, bring you life where you get to go to a coffee shop and just be in the presence of the, the aroma of coffee? Um, for me, having coffee in nature, I love to combine things. Um, so uh, Connie just said that's the joy of yard sailing is the long drive. So I, I can get that. Totally can get that, Connie, uh, getting out of the house and doing the long drive. So um, how many are... Um, for, for instance, how many are people that love to go into small towns and just walk through or bigger towns, but unique towns? Uh, we just had a chance to go uh, last October up above Toronto and uh, look at it. It was, um, oh, if my wife's on, she'll remember the name. Um, it was a town that I have, Colberg. Uh, we'd never been to Colberg and just this cute, picturesque town and just walking through the town. Um, was so refreshing and looking in the little shops, the ones we could go into and had a chance, you know, some people are foodies. They love to go out and eat. Of course, that's difficult right now, uh, but they just love experiencing new places to eat. And so we were able to do that. And of course they had the water there. Uh, yeah. Exploring new places. Exactly. Um, Oh, Alan Peck, you've been going to all the different conservation areas. Love them. That's a great idea. We just passed one today. I'd never even heard of on the way to Amherstburg. So many cool places. Um, uh, Margaret Wolf was just sharing the other day that there are some trails behind her house. I'm going to go have a chance to take a walk there. Um, so these are all small things that bring us life. And right now, again, I'll close with this. We have to find right ways. Um, we have to find ways to get rejuvenated, to stay healthy. Um, you know, we weren't talking about going to nature. Now we're talking about getting our vitamin D. We're talking about being in nature. We're talking about hearing bird sounds. We're talking about getting into the smells. All these things begin to rejuvenate us. Uh, Erica, you just put on, um, she's speaking for Dorman. He loves to take a ride on his uh, his motorcycle. Um, I know that that recharges Dorman when he gets home. You know, it's funny, he drives in a truck, but man, getting on a bike for him just recharges him. Eric, I know you love going for walks. Uh, Connie, the beauty of old architecture. Absolutely. Some of these towns, like my parents or my mom grew up in Petrolia, and that's such a Victorian town. I love to go. Sometimes we'll just drive through it just to see the town because uh, it's so unique. Um, so, man, these are awesome, awesome ideas. Um, I would love for you guys to still add a few uh, as you have a chance, but I just wanted to get on here and really encourage you. Please don't downplay this. People think, well, it's, it's not that important. Man, you staying full of life is important. We cannot minister and give back to people or give out to people if we're not healthy emotionally, mentally, physically ourselves. We need to find ways in this season to rejuvenate. And we have to get out of the box because the things that we normally do, we can't do. And you know what? Maybe in some ways there's a good thing because if we can learn things in this season and not neglect them in the next season, we'll actually be better off. 
I don't think going to a, a show all the time rejuvenates you. Now, going to the show, I love to. It's an experience, and I go maybe once or once every couple months, even on when, without COVID. But there are better ways to rejuvenate ourselves. It's cool to do, but man, there are there are healthier ways. So, so again, I thank you for all the comments tonight. I thank you for jumping on here. Uh, we're going to jump into a new topic in two weeks. Next week, though, if you're following the schedule, we have prayer essentials. We really want to get on, get you on for that. We're really working hard to try to hit every area to make sure we're strong and healthy. And of course, prayer is a huge one. And so uh, Pastor Gary will be on with probably Pastor Rod and myself. Uh, maybe some others we'll see, or maybe not one of us will uh, we'll take a look. And we'll just talk about prayer and how important prayer is um, and how to pray and how to not be scared of prayer and how to have a conversation with God. So good things coming up. We bless you guys. Make sure you get outside with this incredible weather. I don't know what the next few days hold, but uh, we are getting some rain. We need it. Uh, get outside. Go for some walks. Call somebody. Sorry, a spit. Call somebody. Get on the phone. Give somebody a call. Encourage somebody. Don't text them. Call them. Let them hear your voice. Uh, love on some people. I'm challenging the next few days. Call four or five people. Love on them. Tell them how important they are. Um, I'm trying to do this. Uh, I need to do this more often. I'm trying to do it because I need to hear people's voices right now. It's really important. So love you guys. Bless you guys. Pray that you have a great night and we will see you. Uh, we'll see you online uh, either on Friday or Sunday. God bless everyone.